and welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to take a few quick moments to tell you some insights and reflections that I came across during my last week of being inspired through music, artwork, and people. Hmm. You know, living and having those experiences that bring you deeper into that divine connection and relationship are what I live for. That is the deepest inspiration that I can find. So a lot of my thoughts were on honesty and on offering and giving. So kind of like a sacrifice in a way. It's not that you have to give up the thing that you love most, but in being willing to surrender that thing that you love most, it then blossoms and becomes so much bigger than what you could have created all on your own. Now I have often surrendered my artistic practice but it's very important to go about it again and again. Not that it's not enough to surrender once and then call it good, but it is to recenter and to remember and to reconnect with that which gives us our passion and gives us our fire. And so I would like to just go on and talk a little bit about that today. My main point during this video today is about being present with your offering and with what it is that you have come to give, being very aware of it. So I was spending some time in nature, spending some time in prayer. But during this meditation, I just heard some thoughts of a wise teacher who said, if at the altar you remember that you have a grievance against someone, first go and make that right, and then come and offer your gift. And I'm being reminded to pause and I couldn't think of any grievance that I personally had against anyone, but perhaps it is just a moment to reflect and be more present with the offering because you have to take that burden and carry it with you. Perhaps I'm offering something heavy, something painful. Let the burdens be painful. Let them be heavy. Let them dig into you. Let them hurt. It is part of life to be aware of the pain and the sadness and be okay. Be willing to go there to a, to transmute it. And uh, I have mentioned in past videos how I've been very closed off to that kind of stuff in the past. So I really had this awakening and an epiphany into the darkness this last week where I realized that I am strong enough to handle it. I don't have to hide away in fear of those um, scary moments I can sit and be present with that painful burden that I'm carrying even longer perhaps than I think I was able. And I started to realize I am strong enough for this. I can handle this. Yes, all the things that I've repressed, all the pain, all the sadness, I'm going to just let it well up. I'm just going to let that burden, that offering come out. And um, even for others in my life that I wasn't present with them. I, when they told me their sorrows, I was just like, okay, yeah, don't, I, I'm, I'm fine. I don't need to hear that. You know, I don't need to see you. I don't need to validate you. I don't need to, um, talk to you and, and be there as a shoulder for you to lean on because I can't handle it. You know, I'm just not going to do that. But after, uh, this weekend, I know that I've come to a deeper realization that I am able to be there for myself and for other people and I have done it little bit by little bit in life and so now I'm ready for more. Not that I'm welcoming in more sadness but because I have gone through the work I'm ready to help others go through that work too and slowly but surely this is becoming more and more a reality in my life. So during my meditation when I was told to step away from the prayer, step away from the offering, step away from my life. Like I'm laying down my life in the name of love, in the name of beauty and artwork. Like this is why I'm here. I'm spending my time to create, spending my time to share. I could be doing anything else with my life. Like what are we gonna do with this canvas when I'm done with it? Like, is it just gonna sit on a wall? Will it burn in a fire? Will it be dusty in a closet? Or will it bring some kind of truth to someone, perhaps even the very truth I'm speaking and thinking about right now? Will it bring that into somebody's life? Now, what is a grievance? Like, what does this mean for me? For me, it meant not to rush, not to be too hasty, 
to offer my life, but to be present with my offering, be present with who I am, be present with who I am offering to, be present with the desires and dreams and passions that I have been inspired to pursue, be present with them, not to worry so much about how it will come about or when or why, but just to be involved in the moment, be involved in the joy of creating, being involved in the joy of playing in the dirt as a child, as I was out there doing my symbolic sort of prayer because I am very hands-on and I love playing in the dirt and playing with the mushrooms, even though all my friends are like, ew, you're touching a mushroom, gross, you know, they're gooey and slimy and I love little slimy frogs, so I just love the slime. And I felt like a child just digging in the dirt, using my imagination. I'm sure that as you see children playing in the nature, you know, you can see their lips moving and you can um, see that they're having this imaginary journey among themselves, just by themselves. And they're so entertained, we would call it. I would see it as communing with, uh, with nature and with God and just communing with who they are, their deepest part of their heart and what they love. The point of the story is that we are to be aware and present for as long as is required to offer in such a way that is genuine and honest, to offer in a very honest manner that which we have been inspired to give. And so we create the distance and the space as we refrain, as we hold back. You know, you hold back and you create space for yourself to process and distance for you to understand just the exact journey you're going on because it is no light matter to say, I lay my life down in love. And the great teacher said, no greater love has anyone than this to lay his life down for a friend. Now, when we walk away from our altar, we are carrying this burden and it gets very heavy. We're holding it tight. It's dragging us down. Maybe it's spilling over and it's too much to carry. It's just overwhelming and it's just like, how, how could I ever understand? How could I ever show up in this way? You know, maybe we feel like we have nothing left to give, but we are the only one who can carry this burden, this pain. We are the only one who can truly be present with that which needs to be processed and released and let go of. And it's okay to return to what you offer and to return to your pain and to return to your suffering. It's okay to do that because truly we want to live in a way that brings us to that place of worship, that brings us to that place of offering every day. We want to end up and live in a way that that really reminds us every day of, yes, this is what I'm showing up to do. This is who I am. I am passionate in this moment. Like, getting chill bumps now. We can feel this. This is who we are. We are drawn and called, and it's just this fire. I mean, it's a fire just stirring up within you. I mean, look at this. This fire is so hot. How can this passion that I feel so deeply uh, about feel so impossible? How could it be digging into my soul so deeply? But here I am and here I stand, here I offer with open hands. This is the moment that we have come to gather. Like I'm gathering with myself. I'm gathering with the divine in my quiet time, in my alone time. And now here with you, I'm gathering with you even though it's outside of time because you're actually not listening to this at the time I recorded it. This is beyond space and time that we can meet here in this truth. And do you agree with me? I mean, is this something that you are resonating with? Let me know because this is what I show up for. This is the passion. Yes, the passion for the art, but more so to share what is behind the art. All the time we are guided, all the time we are being told 
what to do and how to be and how to grow and which direction to go. And even just a few moments ago, a couple hours ago, I got caught up in, but how and where's this uh, resources gonna come from and how's this and how's that? And are people gonna be able to receive this? Like I've worked so hard on it, but can they receive it? Do they have the resources to receive it? How can I make it accessible for more people and so forth? So. Um, there are these questions that come up and that is when the burden's heavy. That is when our offerings like, you know, I have a grievance here. I don't know if I truly believe this. I have a doubt. I, I think, I think I'm not ready to offer and it's okay if you're not ready to lay down your life in service of the greater hand of love. It's okay. Be present with that offering. Work through those grievances and then offer and come back every day to offer. And when you come back to the offering, so say that it is an altar and the fire is burning up your offering and you come back and you search for it in the ashes. Where is it? I want it back. I want my doubt. I want my sadness. I want my pain. I've identified with this. This is part of who I am. This like anxious, sad, you know, uh, woe is me, pitiful person. Like I want to find that. I'm digging it up. And you know, if you do find a piece of it and it didn't get completely burnt, that is a beautiful opportunity to be more present with that and offer it again. But if you can't find it, then you've done the work. If you can't find the doubt, if you are in such a place that you believe so deeply that you cannot find any doubt for your vision, for your calling, for your passion, then you can be sure that you have truly offered and you have truly laid that down at the feet of truth and the feet of life. Oh, carry me, pick me up, may I bow at your feet. And regardless of whether or not you find those feelings, those grievances, you can pick it up and you can offer it when you're ready. It doesn't have to be now. We don't have to rush this. It doesn't have to happen today. This is just something that is when we're ready, when we've been present long enough, when we have recognized what is going on in this moment and said, okay, I think that, you know, now I'm gonna try again. Now I'm gonna offer it again again and again, it's a lifelong journey, again and again and again, more and more and more and more and more and more and more. Have you noticed over the last couple videos I've made, I'm always saying more and more and more. It's actually a scripture passage, I'll try to find it. And that brings me to my next amazing point where I was talking about, I'm not even painting anymore, I'm so excited to talk. Um, when I was playing in the dirt as a child, I was so amazed that my imagination games and my playing, it was just so good and it felt so good and the reflection was so deep and it was like a mirror. It was like that mirror work. You're looking at yourself and you're reflecting back to yourself and the people you're with and the music you're with, everything showing me who I am. And how could I go any deeper? But romance. Did you know that uh, the divine is romantic and that within every moment of every day there's this calling and a wooing of you. You're being wooed with love and romance to go deeper and deeper into the divine intelligence, into the divine creativity, and into the divine design of who you are, your true being. And so this is the metaphor that we are given in oneness with another individual through sexual practices and sexual, uh, that sacred interaction that is, a, is something to be um, treasured and taken care of because it is a metaphor of how deep we can go into the connection with love and the divine and this oneness and unity and I've learned so much in my, um, I would say, sexual energy just this last week that I think that the learning was building, but I hadn't quite understood. And 
if you want to be open sexually, if you want your, as they call it, a chakra, your, I think it's the root chakra, I don't really know too much about that um, vocabulary. If you want that to be open, then you should take the advice that was given to me by a wise older lady, and it is honesty. So with honesty, honesty and this truth telling, this truth giving, this lie rebuking is um, a band-aid and healing salve for a relationship. And it doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. It can be any kind of relationship, especially that human and divine relationship. Let us be honest with ourselves. So when you are honest, you have done your part. It is not up to you to carry how the person might respond to your honesty. In fact, that other person deserves for you to be honest with them. Your honesty with them and the truth that you can live out amongst each other is our birthright. We must be true to one another. This is the wisdom that was given to me from someone else and it is that even if it hurts, even if you think it's going to hurt them because you don't know how they're going to respond. You don't know if it's going to hurt them or not. And even if it did hurt them, that's okay. Like even if it hurts, truth is always better because that tension that's held between you and you're not really sure if you're telling the truth or if there's a lie, are you being honest? Why are you feeling this way? Why am I feeling this way? That tension is only coming because you're holding something. You're holding this burden, this offering that you want to give. You're holding this burden that was never meant to be hid. You're hiding it. It was never meant to be held. It was never meant to be hid, but you're hiding it and holding it. And that's the tension. And as soon as you let it go, all that tension goes away. Like I was under the impression that the tension would get worse if I be raw, if I be honest. It's just gonna be so much more difficult than it already is. But no, actually, it's easier. And it, it's like, it's just the tension. And I gotta calm myself down now because I'm getting too excited. I mean, these, these truths are um, small and simple, but uh, deep. Uh, and when you really think about it, and this video is just, you know, a short little snippet of your day, but this was my uh, contemplation over the last week and, and building from years. It's the contemplation. And I hope that it brings you some insight and help in your life. Thank you for being here with me to watch me get all <laughs> nerdy about spiritual concepts, nerdy about the art and what I'm here to do. In fact, I just realized this last week that um, y'all out here on YouTube are not my subscribers. You're my nerds. If you wanna be all nerdy with me about concepts of spirituality and love and joy, and well-being and that ability to overcome fear and overcome anxiety and a nerd about the beautiful practice of art and you're in the right place and let's be nerds together and i've never identified with being a nerd before so but i was homeschooled in case you didn't know that might be an indicator <laughs> thank you for being here thank you for listening i appreciate you listening